Hello, welcome to the video. So after quite a long wait, the number plates have just arrived for this 2012 Honda N-Box Custom that I've imported recently. This is quite an exciting day because the fitting of the number plates is kind of the, the final stage in getting the car on the road. Um, so I'm fitting these number plates to this one today and I thought I'd do a video on Japanese import number plates. I have obscured part of the number plate on this one, hopefully for obvious reasons. First thing I'd like to talk about is size then and why when it comes to Japanese import number plates, size is important. If you go online and search for Japanese import number plates, you will find commonly three different sizes listed. You'll find uh, 13 by seven. I'll do them all in inches for now, but then we'll convert uh, to millimeters in a little while. They're usually listed in inches, which is why I'm doing it that way. So you'll find 13 by 7, 13 by 6.5, and 12 by 6. Only one of those is correct, and this applies to the vast majority of Japanese import vehicles, although not all. So the correct size, uh, and hopefully it won't surprise you to hear the size that I have bought, is 13 by 6.5. That equates to 330 by 165 millimeters. So why should you be bothered about this? Well, let's say you get a 13 by seven number plate. In this car, if you're gonna clip it into the original mounting brackets at the bottom, an extra half inch on that plate would mean that it wouldn't actually fit. So it would just be hanging by its mounts at the top, flapping away at the bottom there. So what about the size too small? Well, you'll probably notice there's paint wear as there is on most imports because it's had this number plate in this location for its entire life. If you fit a number plate that's too small, you're, you're still gonna be able to see some of that wear unless you're able to polish it all out, which would be quite hard to do. So that's another reason to get the right size. And you'll see if I fit this one here, it perfectly, if I've lined it up correctly, perfectly obscures the paint wear underneath. A final plea before we go on to measurements. Please, please don't try and fit a UK shape number plate to a Japanese import vehicle. <laughs> Again, this is only my personal opinion, but it looks rubbish. And you probably cause chafing of the paint. Like if I fitted it to this one, it'd be rubbing against the sides here and causing chafing. And also I think quite often it looks like a really half-assed attempt to try and disguise the fact that the car is a Japanese import. And you wouldn't want to do that, would you? So please try and get the right size, which is 13 by 6.5 inches for the vast majority of Japanese imports. Right, we've moved inside to the bench now. Let's talk about measurements and drilling some holes. And yes, we are going to be drilling holes. I know it's possible to fix number plates with sticky pads. I don't like that. I don't like it for a number of reasons. It's much easier to get the number plate skew if on the car uh, with sticky pads than it is with accurately measured holes. And also the sticky often in the, uh, in the heat of the summer, assuming we have some, um, can quite often allow the number plates to to slip. This car's got hooks at the bottom to stop that. I guess that would be a counter argument to it. But anyway, I'm gonna be drilling holes because I feel it holds the plate more securely. Turn this one over. You see we've got some measurements on the back there. Don't trust these for all cars. Please take your own measurements. So as I said earlier, 330 millimeters across that way, 165 that way. And then I've marked out the locations of the holes. So 210 millimeters between the hole centers. And the holes are in this car's case, 140 millimeters from the bottom of the plate. So where these points, these lines cross here is where we're gonna be drilling some holes. After you've marked up, do make sure that you've got the number plate the right way up and you're not drilling the holes upside down or, you know, drilling the holes for the plate to be mounted like that. So now's the opportunity just to check your measurements. Okay, we've double checked our measurements. Let's get drilling. Uh, I'm drilling a six millimeter hole. The six mil 
plastic bolts that I'm going to be using. You could make the whole 6.5 if you want to have a bit more play, but I've, I've found that 6 is fine. I think the key things when doing the drilling of the holes are going from the back of the plate to the front, having some wood underneath, and most importantly of all, go slowly. I'm using a drill press. You absolutely don't have to use a drill press, but I've got one, so I, I'm going to use it because it makes it easier. If you are drilling with a hand drill, try and hold the drill straight rather than allowing it to wobble from side to side because that will encourage the drill to bind and then potentially crack the plate. Well, I think we can call that a success so far. Two holes drilled in the centres. No cracking or breaking through or anything on the other side. So I'm going to do the same with the other plate using this one as a guide and then we'll get them fitted. Right, we have two plates with holes drilled in hopefully the correct location. So let's go and fit them to the car. I'm going to be using these plastic screws, bolts. I've got yellow ones and white ones and I've also got some black ones because although that hasn't happened although this ha hasn't happened in this case sometimes you end up drilling a hole through one of the numbers or letters because this is a 12 the top section is quite compact if it was say uh, I don't know a 67 or a 54 or something like that where the spacing would be wider then you'd most likely end up having drilled through both the numbers and that would be time to use one of the black bolts like that if you want to be really authentic, you could use the genuine Japanese article. In most cases, the exporter will have helped you by lobbing the old number plate bolts inside the car somewhere. They'll either be wherever they landed when they opened the door and threw them in, or if they're being a bit more considerate, they might be in one of the map pockets or something like that. Strictly speaking, I think this is probably incorrect in the UK, although I don't know for, for certain, um, but you probably will get some free uh, stainless bolts with your vehicle. This one's they've all even uh, left the security seal on the bolt as well. But I'm going to use these because I th overall I think it makes for a, a slightly neater finish. Right, let's fit our number plate then. I put a tiny bit of grease on these bolts. Just purely personal preference thing really. Just helps them, I find it helps them go in a little bit. The other thing I'm going to do actually, and I see a number of vehicles driving around with this strange tinge to their number plates, and that is because they haven't peeled off the protective film on the front. The seller of these number plates has been very kind and written film peel off which indeed I will. I was going to leave it till the end but I'm going to start it now because I realized that my tape is going to stop the plate sitting neatly in the mounts. So 
So there we have one number plate securely fitted. The last thing to do, and I hope I'm going to be able to do this and get it round the screws. Indeed I am. There we go. Okay, having done the rear number plate, I've now fitted the front as well. They're both looking really smart. And that is this Honda N-Box Custom ready to go and be used on the road. Thanks very much for joining me for this Japanese import number plate video. I hope it was useful for you. If you like this type of thing, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss future videos. On that subject, the next video is going to be a full walk around and test drive of this N-Box. So look out for that one. Thanks very much for watching. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.